All right. I don't know about you guys. I I can't take it anymore. Like I can't. I <laughs> it, it it is absolutely insane the world that we're living in. And part of my prayer uh, coming on here live is just to see is anybody else out there like does anybody else feel the same way like we have an open platform advocating for mobile murder clinics to drive through the streets like right now in front of the DNC babies are being murdered men are being sterilized transgenderism and child perversion is being platformed and it's like where are the like real christians like where are the people that like care about the things that god cares about like i'm not talking about like the artists the singers the preachers like all that stuff that that i'm talking about like people with conviction like where where are people with like courage and conviction and like <laughs> like People that don't just swindle and use the gospel or use the gifts or use their charisma or use it whatever for their own advantage. But where are the people that are actually going to speak the truth to a godless culture? Like we are in a leadership crisis in America. And if it's not apparent and obvious to you, let me just tell you as somebody that's gone Probably more across America than almost anyone I know in the last several years. I mean, we're, we've gone to 42 state capitals. We've got eight more to go, and we're finishing on the National Mall in D.C. But we are in a leadership vacuum in America. Like, we got the glitz and glam of Instagram ministers, and we got singers, and we, got, we look cool like the world and everything. But we have very few people with any sort of conviction that are willing to like openly admit like I'm reading here like about Jehu and about David and about all these people that in their day they were called crazy like Jehu was called a madman David was like tone it down David just chill like everybody knows Goliath there but you don't got to make a big deal about it but yet David was unwilling to come into their agreement with darkness David was the one that said hey listen is there not a cause like, is there not a cause? Why are you tolerating this stuff? Why are you tolerating this spirit speaking out like it is? And I just feel like in America right now, it's like, how in the world are we a nation with so much gospel penetration, with so many churches and so many ministries and so much, uh, so many books and so many albums and so much stuff, but yet so little conviction and so little of a spine. Like, what is going on? Like, I woke up this morning and I just was thinking, like, God raise up the Jehus, like raise up. You know, it talks about Jehu, how he was commissioned in a season where Jezebel was reigning supreme and wreaking havoc and terror. And it's like, I don't have to be more obvious than this. You have Ahab, which is the docile, sheepish, uh, you know, uh, leader that abdicates his authority to a wicked woman that is on, that is hell bent on perversion and abortion and bail and destruction. And she has smooth lips and tender eyes and she's demonic and it's like yeah welcome to 2024 like this is happening today and you know what the answer is to the spirit of Jezebel it's the rising up of the Jehus of a generation that are they don't care about being called crazy like it says in here second kings I'm reading it it says they looked at Jehu and they said he's driving like a maniac you know how many times I've been called a maniac? I've been called an uh, an alt right fanatic or whatever the the new you know things they call people you know that believe in the Bible these days. Like and and I read these stories and I start to, you know what I, I I'll kind of I'm kind of okay with it now. Like I'm go ahead go what else what other names do you got? Like as long as I'm not just a norm like a Christian blending in. Like if, if you call me that, like a cool kid, or if you call me popular or an influencer, that's like a death blow. But call me a maniac all you want. I'm in good company. And I just, guys, I am so like blown away this week with the silence 
of the masses of church leaders and people with platforms. They're unwilling to call out darkness. They're unwilling to call out perversion. And you know what? Like, there's a vacuum right now in America, in the nations of the world. We need the Jehus. We need the those that have a mandate to dethrone Jezebel and bring the kingdom. We need you to rise up. Up. Something I want to do, guys, in the next eight capitals is I want to commission Jehus. Like, if you love Jesus and you want to see works of darkness destroyed in your generation, please come to these capital cities and I will lay hands on you and we will pray for you and we will believe that God's going to commission you in your state, in your city, in your community, in your ministry. Like, fortune favors the bold. Like, we need bold, courageous truth tellers in a season of darkness. So I want to encourage you, like we have eight capitals left and then we're gathering on the National Mall on October 26th. This is not just a gathering for women or for men or for young people or for old people. We need all legit followers of Jesus to show up. Those that truly care about the future of our nation and the future of of our generations. We're going to do a a massive Jesus march through the streets of the city. We're going to march by the White House, the Supreme Court, the Capitol. We're going to remind all the powers and the principalities that God has not finished writing the story in our nation. And then we're going to gather on the National Mall. Thousands of us, tens of thousands of us. I believe it's going to be massive. Just days before the election and we are going to commission the worshipers to take his presence across the land and so listen i just have a burning in my spirit i've been praying and fasting this week leading up to uh these these three capital cities minnesota uh, ohio and michigan and i want to call the crazy people i want to call the mad man for jesus the mad women for jesus those that are pricked in their spirit those that are not okay with the current narrative of what's happening in america if you're out there, please join me. Then we're going to Pennsylvania, Juneau, Alaska, uh, Atlanta, Georgia in October, Raleigh, North Carolina. And we're finishing the 50 states in Phoenix, Arizona on October 19th. And then a couple days later, we're traveling all the way across the country to Washington, D.C. So I just feel stirred in my spirit, guys. We, we, we got to move past the glitz and the glamour and the fame of this powerless Christianity. We need real Jesus people to rise up that care about the things Jesus cares about, that are willing to stand on the things he says to stand for. And listen, if you can't speak out about a a mobile death abortion clinic that's circling around the DNC in Chicago, I don't know what you can speak about. That is absolutely from the pit of hell. And I'm telling you, it is from the pit of hell, and we need some real followers of Jesus. Like, not intellectuals, not just people that maybe know the theology, not just people that know people. No, we need real, wild Jehus. Like, those that are willing to ride for Jesus. Those that are willing to destroy works of darkness. Like, I, I, I'm grateful... You know, for our nation, and I'm grateful for all the gospel has done, and I'm grateful for worship music and churches and pastors and sermons and podcasts. But guys, these are the moments in history where we find out who really means what they sing, who really means what they preach. We find out, like, who's actually a real follower of Jesus, who's not in it for anything else but to speak the truth. Uh, of God's word to a nation that desperately needs it. So I I don't give a rip. People say, you do this kind of thing, Sean, you had a nice ministry going. If you would have just gathered people and you could have gotten, no, I don't give a rip about that. I have to stand before Jesus one day. I have to stand before him and give an account for my life, give an account for my influence, give an account for what I did with what he's given me. And I want to be on the side of the king, man. I want to be on the side of King Jesus. And so if you want to be there with me. Join me in the next eight cities. Join us on the National Mall and just pray, man. Pray that God would raise up more mad men and mad women like Jehu, like David, uh, like Apostle Paul, like so many throughout scripture. And I would encourage you, like do a deep dive onto these historic leaders. Do a deep dive on revival history. Those that changed nations and shifted things were not those that blended in. We're not those that were, were willing to be silent in seasons where they needed to raise their voice. So I had a last thing I want to say is I had a very gripping uh, dream a few days ago. I don't have these very often, but I had one of 
actually being in a, in a in a line of persecuted believers. I was there with my family, and we were we were in this line, and I knew the government was organizing. It was some kind of uh, government orchestrated line of Christians, and they were pushing Christians into into this thing, and they were having us go to these places, and and I don't even know what was to come, what was on the other side of the wall we were facing, but I just knew that there was a sobriety in my heart, like if we do not raise our voice, if we do not rise up, I mean, right now already in Minnesota, we're going to be there on Friday. They can right now in Minnesota, they can take your child away from you if you do not agree to a sex change operation as a parent. Like if your kid is confused and you don't want him to get a sex change, they can remove custody. The state can remove custody and the state will actually do a sex change surgery on your child. Look it up. HF 146 Waltz, right? Waltz right now who's on the who's on the ticket with uh, for vice president. He was the one that signed this bill into law. Like this is absolutely absurd. And the fact that these kinds of things are happening, like don't you guys see where this is going? Like it is time for us to rise up. I'm I'm, I'm not playing nice anymore. I, I've never been the nice guy, but definitely in this season, it's not a season to be nice. It's a season to rise up with truth and righteousness and justice. And so uh, it's time to ride like a madman, like like it says about Jehu. It's time to dethrone the works of Jezebel. It's time to restore righteousness to our nation. And it's time to see a harvest of souls come to Jesus. And we can only do that if we expose the works of darkness. So love you guys. Thank you for letting me rant on here for a minute. I'm going to head to my son's <laughs> my son's football scrimmage, but I, 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 I am just hoping and praying that there'll be more people across, you know, Instagram and Facebook and, and, and social media that resonate with this because right now we need the Jehus to rise up. We need men and women of God that are not afraid of culture, that are not going to sink in to the lowest common denominator of, of a weak, powerless church. It is time to rise up, baby. It's time to put on the sunglasses and let's let's ride like Jehu. All right, love you guys.